Starting out. What we got? We got some advice for y'all. All right? Not advice from us. We got advice from none other than Barry Hefner. If y'all don't know Barry Hefner, Ja'Cory, tell him, tell him who Barry is. Yeah, so he's one of the, the, the founders of Since the 80s, which is... I know they're, they're mainly in the management, managing like J.I.D. Earth Gang. Um, I can't think of, I don't know how to say her name, but the, the artist's name is like N-J-Z-O-M-A, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, I don't know yeah, how to say that. Yeah, I don't know how to say it either. But yeah, pretty much, bro, he's like a superstar manager out here, you know what I'm saying, from homegrown in Atlanta and someone we be looking at for, you know, some some inside information here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, um, I think this is actually the second time we've actually – Talked about something from Barry on the pod. I think there was one episode where we were supposed to talk about something from him, maybe. I don't know if we got to it. I remember it was on the list, though. I, I don't know if we like got we, to it. I feel like we got to it. If so, that makes him like the first person we've addressed or talked about twice yeah. so fast in, in so few episodes. Man, you be dropping things for you, let, man. Let, let you know the game. So y'all <laughs> go follow Barry and let him, let him know who we, we sent y'all. You know what I'm saying? No labels necessary. But uh, Barry... Says, so I have this method that I use when developing an artist that may be old or new, who's who knows, but I call the I, let me start this over. <laughs> I have this method that I use when I when developing an artist that may be old or new, who knows, but I call it the inside out theory. So I'll explain the inside out theory is like this. I'll advise all artists to think of their career as a house or a piece of property. All right, y'all, y'all use that imagination, whatever house. Close your eyes, get yeah. into it. Close your eyes, get into it. Let's <laughs> meditate on this. Now, next slide. Most artists today love to focus on just the inside of their homes described in this image below. Recording. Mm. Number two, their image. Mm. Number three, strategy. Number four, research. Number five, social media, and number six, practicing, which I assume, you know, practicing their craft of music, all right? Now, he gives a picture, this beautiful picture of inside of a home and social media is like the couch, the image is the side of the couch, the practicing is like the floor mat. You could put it anywhere throughout the house, but he just goes further with the image if y'all don't see the screen. Now, next, all right? Artists fail to focus on the outside of their homes, which is number one, execution. Two, showmanship. All right, that's different than what y'all normally practice in just the music. That's the entertainment on mm -hmm. stage, right? Number three, networking. Mm. Number four, confidence. Mm. That's very interesting. We got to address that one day. <laughs> number five, likability. Number six, charisma. Mm. Yeah, we yeah we definitely actually gonna deep, dive deeper in this. I like this. Now, did, <laughs> did he puts these things on the outside of the house, right? Execution is one of the windows. Showmanship's a part of the uh, the structure. Networking is near the foundation. All that stuff, right? That's the outside of the house. Now, here he goes. The thoughts behind this method is to build. The thoughts behind this method is to build the ideal home or career. You must first start with the foundation. Let that balance between the inside and outside by only focusing on one you can have success but you can't achieve superstar status without properly doing both i think i instantly agree right yeah. anybody doing both yeah. like or anybody that's a superstar definitely has both yeah 100 easy easy so then the last image right inside and outside now he, he this is like a flex it's like a mansion or something right <laughs> so you had a house when you were focused on the inside you had a decent little house when you focus on the outside but you're doing both Hey, you, you you got that. You got square footage, baby. Yeah, shit's you, crazy. You, you in here. All right? So, last couple of statements. The issues I see arising with the business is artists and their team are so hyper-focused on one aspect of the grind and how it looks versus the grind and what it takes. I could go on for days and days of about this you know i actually thought this was a b testing when i first read it <laughs> days and days about this but the point is take care of your home from the inside to the outside if you want to keep it bam that's it so jacory one the same question i'm gonna ask everybody else out there what do y'all think about this analogy you think it fits anything are there any holes in it is it good what's up can, can you go back to the the second the second slide real quick where he talks about the, I think it's the inside of the house. Inside. I think it's a good analogy. Like, it, it definitely painted the picture for me. I didn't know what was going the first time I read it. I was like, it's like a house. I was like, wait, you know. Right. Like, no, but it, it, by the time I got through it. He, he won you over? Yeah, it won me over. The the only one that, I guess, kind of confused me is like research. 
Because I don't understand. I, don't, I mean, I'm guessing like he means like artists, I guess researching more the music industry, looking into what needs to be done. But to me, I could, that would fall in. I don't know. Maybe that would come up for a strategy to me. I might be nitpicking with it, but that might just be me. I would, I would like clarity on that one because yeah. I, I wasn't sure if maybe he was talking about like maybe I'm just researching the landscape because he said the artists and their team, right? Yeah. All right, so maybe researching like where I want to place my music, stuff like that. I mean that still falls in the marketing would probably be a little bit more of an outside. I don't I don't know. Yeah, that one is a little bit unclear for sure. For yeah, sure. But I mean the the points he touched on though, a hundred percent right. Like all this stuff on the screen right now is priority number one for most artists. Yeah. Like yeah. make sure them let me make sure the music is straight. Let me make sure I look like an artist. Right. Let me strategize on how I'm gonna blow up in ninety days. Like all this is a hundred percent like priority number one, I think, for like ninety percent of artists. Right. Can, you, can you go to the other one real quick? He breaks down the, the inside of the house. Okay. This shit, all of this shit to me is not even second thought for most artists. Usually third thought. Hey, this is where the reality of the game yeah. sets in. Yeah, it kicks in. Yeah. And I think <laughs> now that I part, uh, connected with that last statement, right? Grinding, what did he say? He said people focus on the grind and how it looks versus mm-hmm. the grind and what it takes, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. So, a lot of that number two, that outside is definitely what it takes, right? Yeah. Whatever it takes to execute to get there. But we talk about that showmanship to yeah. really build the fan base, not just have people show up because you got a, a popping song. Yeah. Right? Because they know they're going to get a good show. Yeah. They know they're going to get a good show and they're going to keep wanting to go, go um, to your shows. And you're going to get put on bigger and bigger platforms, right? If your show is trash, you're not going to get invited to the Super Bowl. I know I just went straight to the top, but like yeah. you're not going to get invited to certain ven- uh, venues and um, ceremonies if your show is not popping. They might yeah. like your music, but you're not showing up. You right? might get booked for a birthday party. Yeah. But you're not getting booked for the big stage. Easy. Easy. And, and three through six, I feel like a super rare. He might be talking more about the artist team at that point because I feel like it's, it is very rare to see an artist that is a good networker. I feel like a lot of artists don't even like going outside like that. Maybe yeah. not rare. Maybe it's just I haven't run across a lot of them. A lot of artists I know are very introverted, don't like going outside like that. They don't like going to – you tell them, like, yo, you should go to this conference. I'm not going to a conference. My manager is going to this conference, right? <laughs> like, or my, my assistant is going to go to yeah. it. Like, they don't want to do – most artists I know don't, don't want to do, like, the business side of networking. They'll network with artists, like other artists and maybe producers, right, the creative networking all day. But they don't want to go, like, talk to a sync agent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, a lot of them, confidence, I guess, is kind of like whatever. It's hard to tell an artist's confidence until you get to know them. You know what I'm saying? I think. Some- so, what do, you, what do you think about when you hear confidence? Like, the first thing you hear, like, why did he list confidence on here in your mind? I think the, the, the first thing I think of when I hear confidence is the way, I think one part of it is, like, how much you let, like, outside criticism get to you. Cause to me, that's mm. the easiest way to be able to tell how confident an artist is because I, we don't really know them, right? So I can't like, you don't get to meet them and talk to them and judge their true confidence, but you can tell by the way they react to certain things online, online how confident they might be in, in whatever it is they're putting out or working on. So that to me, um, I think performance confidence is a big one. But I think this is why in many ways, Maybe it's like the Bible, right? It's it's vague enough. Or, well, I don't even just say the Bible, like a Bible or the speech in general. It's vague enough for you to just interpret in a way that fits suits you. Yeah. But to me, it shows him like just having real experience, which obviously is a thing. But yeah, confidence is something you would typically look at as an inside thing, right? Yeah. But he put it on the outside, right? Maybe it's the way it impacts the outside. But a few things. There's a few different interpretations of confidence. What you just said, number two, your star quality comes with a level of confidence, right? Yeah, Do yeah. you present yourself with a level of confidence when you meet people in person? You talked about performance too. You mentioned that. That's a different type of confidence. So just having the confidence as an artist, um, like when you communicate and like uh, when you show yourself, when you show yourself to the fans outside of your music main environment, the music videos, right? Your your actual music, the tracks. Yeah. That's what builds the image on another level. 
All right. It's like it's almost it's weird because even the artists that are like looked at as introverted, right? Or they're not like moving in the scene or they're anti, the ones at the top are still confident. Yeah. Right. They're like they do they have that perception of confident. Otherwise, you couldn't give the people who are so insecure this guiding light. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like it's like, oh yeah, I'm introverted too, and he doesn't like being outside, or he doesn't like to be a part of the main thing. Yeah, they relate to that aspect of you, but you're doing it in a confident way, yeah. way in the yeah. way you present yourself. That's what makes it aspirational. So I think confidence is definitely a part of what helps you execute better, but it's also what allows you to have the aspirational level that's in some ways required from your fan base. Yeah. Like you and you can't get that otherwise. So then you also have the likability. Yo, I mean, this is when he goes back. We're talking about superstars here. Again, yeah. you don't have yeah. to you don't have to do any of this. You actually do not have to be a superstar. You can have a career on whatever level you want to, right? But likability, if you want to be on a top tier level, people it's have huge. to like you, right? Yeah, it's huge, bro. Like, not even like just the you. fans, like like we were talking about like everyday people who are just around you, but the yes. grocery people, you know what I'm saying? Your mailman. The, or yeah, the industry people. Yeah, the industry people, right? yeah, like all those people, bro. Like they have to like you. Easy. Or or at least feel like they kinda like you while they're around, you know. And they get talked about a lot. Like I think a lot of artists um discount like how much of the industry is really just like socializing, right? Like we talk about it a lot, bro. It's like mm-hmm. in the perfect world we all just sit in the house, put our shit out, and we'd all be rich and, and amazing, but it don't work like that. <laughs> you gotta go outside, shake yeah. hands, kiss babies, and win people over. Yeah, music is yeah. is one hundred percent like that. More than, you know, many industries. Many I'm not, industries. I don't wanna say for sure that it's the most like that, but it's one of those industries that's socialization heavy yeah and what, <laughs> the higher you go and what's crazy about it too is like it's like everybody that's a part of the organization has to be social and likable like i think about like think about when we went to la and we had um lunch with like the bmg people right it's me you jocelyn ej imagine if like jocelyn and ej was like weird and anti the whole time right it's like yeah. it's like they also have to be just as likable yeah. and social in that situation as we do yep. Well, artists is like was there too. Oh uh, yeah, Nick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like somebody that we brought around us, that we vouched for, has to also now be sociable and likable to a degree. And so with artists, it's the same. But it's like when you go in these situations, like I think they look at like, oh, my manager is the one that has to be, you know, the busybody kind of bouncing around, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. But it's like, no, nah, bro, we looking at you too, bro. If your manager's working the room and you kind of like off to the corner, like you know, what I'm saying being weird, like it's gonna it's gonna come back to your operation, bro. You just you just. <laughs> gave me another click in the brain because if we go back to it, remember at the beginning, all right, he, he talks about the artist and their team, yeah. right? What their focus is. I don't even know where that is. Or maybe it was at the end and when he mentioned it. Oh, I liked it. Oh, well. But <laughs> like, so let's also apply this shit to the managers. Yeah. Managers, you got to go be likable. Yeah. I remember, I can't remember who mentioned this last, but it's a common story. Right, where people will not rock with you because of your manager. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, not even just will not rock with you because of your manager. There are scenarios where I will rock with you. However, I won't work with you because of your manager. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like I like you, but I, you never gonna find out until that manager is out of your life. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never still know. With that dude? Nah, yeah. It's like it's like that relationship that's mm-hmm. weighing you down. You know, it's like, oh man, all of a sudden, ever since we broke up, bro, ever since I got rid of her, just all these opportunities been coming <laughs> <laughs> in life. Like things are a little bit lighter, sleep is better. I'm executing. <laughs> like it's one of those things. Some managers really can't bring that weight. And it's not just a manager, though, it could be many other people yeah. from other directions on the team anybody right? that's a representation of you anybody that's a representation of you yeah. so it's something to be aware of and then charisma that's just that thing that's that's that extra yeah that's a hard one that, that, yeah i don't think you can teach i feel like I you can study so. charisma i don't know if you're gonna truly teach charisma nah like, nah i don't think you can I, you know you could be more likable right yeah there's a, <laughs> a a level of training of charisma i feel like that's at the bottom of the charisma spectrum that just means being very likable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the X factor level of charisma, that's 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 a little bit more difficult because it's funny, charisma is like this weird mix when you break it down. It's not just oh he's fun to be around, right? There's some people who are like really funny, always fun to be around, but that's not necessarily charisma alone, right? Yeah. Like there's all. It's more persuasive. 
It's persuasion. Yeah. There's a level of that that comes with charisma. Yeah. 100%. Right? 100%. So then you go back and let's look at the ones near the top. Like, covers Kanye. Highly persuasive. Right? Highly polarizing. So he's anti-persuasive to many people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's very persuasive to many, right? And he does do it with a level of charisma. You know what I'm saying? He's he, 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 Yeah. He, he runs with it. You know what I'm saying? And a huge part of that, right? Is belief, and I think people who don't have charisma on every level at least have charisma in some lo- category, something yeah. that they really know and they care about. Yeah, right. Because then you have confidence. Most of it comes from the conviction in which you deliver the message. Yeah, that's all it is. And it's funny. I, I thought this a long time ago. Right. It's like if you believe some something, you're really about it. You have strong belief, and and you might be. Uh, like a little, little less social, right? And and hard on speaking around, envi- speaking to other people in environments, et cetera. But like, let's just say your life is on the line, or your mom's life is on the line, right? You you can speak a lot more convincingly, yeah. right? Well, cool. And there's some people who can speak in those categories where things matter. Then there's other people who can have a high level of charisma, no matter what they're talking about. Those are the bullshitters and the yeah. people who are <laughs> at those, high risk of those becoming people are like dangerous. <laughs> those people are dangerous. <laughs> like snake oil salesmen, all that type of stuff. It, that, it, that is a dangerous trait to have. They could be lying or they could not know much, right? Those people who can be naturally good at a sales job yeah. and they barely know the product. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So they don't even have a real reason to, <laughs> to be confident. They just talk. <laughs> and say whatever they say with conviction and then there's some people yeah outside of like sales and business environment that i've encountered that uh they, they're definitely dangerous in other ways right? like, <laughs> they're dangerous in other ways um shoot shoot karens are like that so karens <laughs> yeah mm. the, hey man you know they, they be lying with charisma man I mean, okay I mean. oh my gosh He's trying to attack me. He's trying to attack me. Calling the police. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? <laughs> it's, it's the other side of it. If that's the other side of it. There, bro, that, charisma is a dangerous coin, right? Yeah, uh, used as a yeah. tool and then uh, especially people who have it in natural. Gary Vee is one of those guys. Right? He said how he was um, like, if it wasn't his for his parents, he probably would have been like a con artist or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. which means he probably even straddles it sometimes in what he does. He's just more aware and has to like get himself back to the beginning. Oh, 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 I'm going too far. So he's aware <laughs> where the boundaries are. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's it's a, it's a natural trait and it's dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, as, as long as you recognize it, it helps. <laughs> it, it, it helps. But all of these things are like really important, I think not just for the artists, many of them for the team as well, right? Yeah. Like, because let's go to networking. Bam, we we know, like, you're the managers especially, right? They need to be heavy on networking far more than the artists, right? Of course, we talked about likability, but execution, of course, right? To roll out all these things that need to be done, being on tour, all those things that need to be done. And then showmanship, you know, that's, a, that's like a little extra for somebody like a manager or whatever on the back end and like how they go about the business and and understanding how to do your rollouts with flair or mm-hmm. let the in, the rest of the industry know or put them on notice with flair there's a lot of you know we've seen rollouts like that yeah, yeah. or things being done like oh dang the way they move is is special yeah, right having different. a little showmanship about about yourself can definitely um take things to another level let me see but is there anything else you want to say on this before we go on to the next topic? Because we got a lot of things for y'all today, especially on YouTube, the platforms on general. There's a lot of updates and ways y'all should be thinking about the platform. So we're going to drop some some crazy uh, gems on those. But yeah, Ja'Cory, before we move on, is there something you want to add on to this analogy? Uh, nothing to add, man. Just shout out to Barry again for for, for the gems, man. You know, he gave us a great, great topic. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, always appreciate a, a topic, man. Always appreciate a topic. Like, he, he keep throwing those out, man. We might have to... I make like, him a regular. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Hey, make him, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Barry's segment. I gotta, we got to figure out a catchy catchy name for that or something. Or have him on, have him on which would be dope. Right, it we, could be this, we could do this with a lot of people, so I'm not even gonna say what I'm. I'm not gonna even say what I was about to say. Actually, we know y'all out there. 
<laughs> taking our ideas and shit. Appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you want to be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.